listen, everybody's heard the statement before, Vince, I'm sure you've heard it before, why jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> because it's, uh, it's great. But let's start with something. Most of us are living their dream, their fear, sorry, instead of living their dream. Yeah. And I was one of them. Like me, I come from a skydiving family. But as a kid, I didn't want to jump. I was way too scared, <laughs> like my mom. Yeah. But I did my first jump with my dad in 98. But you know what? I hated it. At the door of the plane, I was so terrified. In free fall, it was fine. But then under canopy, I almost felt sick. <laughs> but anyway, one year after, I still decided to go for my solo jump. Yeah. But only to stop people on the skydiving center to tell me, ah, but Vincent, you are a son of skydiver, so you should try to do one solo jump. So in May 2000, I decided to go for my solo jump. But I was scared like crazy. <laughs> The plane arrives, it takes off. After 15 minutes, we arrive at 4,000 meters. The door of the plane opens. <laughs> I see the first skydiver jumping out. <laughs> and at that point, I told myself, but what am I doing here? <laughs> but you know what? That day, I decided that I was going to go above my fear and jump. Yeah. And I will always remember that moment I jumped out. I was so scared. But as soon as I stabilized in free fall, well, I was flying. And that feeling, was incredible. <laughs> so I finished the jump, I opened my parachute, I land next to my dad, then I see my mom running to me. She takes me in her arm and she's like, please, my son, <laughs> tell me you didn't like it. <laughs> and unfortunately, I loved it. Okay. <laughs> so, so clearly, you became, this became your passion. But not only your passion, you've turned it into a profession. And I think, I think everyone in the room, at least I know, I know for me, what motivates me is I'm able to turn my profession into a, my passion into a profession. Oh yeah, of course. And me, uh, I believe that everything happened for a reason. And I got lucky enough that I met my teammate here, Fred Fugin, when I started skydiving. And at that time, he was 20 and I was 15. Very fast, he became my best friend and my mentor. Yeah. But we've always been inspired by a group of friends who shared our passion for flying. They were called the Soul Flyers. Yeah. Uh, you can see them here. And those guys, they were experts in all aerial sports. And they had one goal, to realize a technical project in some of the most beautiful places of the world. But unfortunately, over the years, some of those members left the team and others had some uh, serious accident. Yeah. And eventually, the team stopped. But with my teammate Fred, in 2010, we realized that this wasn't just a hobby for us. That was a dream and a legacy we wanted to pursue. Yeah. And this for the rest of our life. Wow. So you've run multiple world titles. So what, like, what is competitive free flying? <laughs> like, what, like, first of all, it's clearly competitive. What is free flying? So to begin, free and, flying, and why? <laughs> and why? Because it's great. Because <laughs> it's great. Now, but free flying, it's a discipline of skydiving where we fly in the three dimension. It's the youngest discipline, but also the most radical, because we have average speed of 300 kilometers an hour. And in competition, we are a team of three. It's two performers and one cameraman. And the goal is to realize some technical choreography in 45 seconds of free fall. And what it takes to win some competition, it's a lot of training. Like for us, we would do an average of 1,200 jumps per year. So it's, uh, wow. it's quite a lot. And of course, perseverance made us achieve our first goal, our dream. It's to become world champion in 2004 in Brazil. Yeah, it's amazing. So after you go win all these world titles, you clearly get bored. You got nothing else to do. Well, uh, I would not say that you get bored because <laughs> jumping out of an airplane, it's never boring. <laughs> and I wish everyone can experience that. But after a great competition career, it was time for us to do something else like we had nothing else to prove and had other dreams yeah. with always the same goal. It was to keep on flying together with Fred. Just keep pushing. So, so I'm going to quickly show some images. You're going to share with the audience what you're doing. Um, I'm sure everyone's going to be like, why in the world? And then they're going to fall in love with you the same way I did. So, okay. so let, let's walk through these images. Vince, share a little bit with us. Uh, so here you can see us jumping from the highest building in the world, Burj Khalifa in Dubai. So now, imagine standing on top of that building at more than 829 meters. This is pretty much like eight times the size of Big Ben. 
or the tower we were uh, last night. And then you are on an unstable platform, and you have to jump. <laughs> Would you do it, Alain? I would do it if I was hanging out with you. Oh, OK. <laughs> so what do you do Actually, then? no, let, let's get real. There's zero chance I would do it. <laughs> but there's zero chance that I would do it. No, but that's great. They allowed us to do four jumps from that building, which is uh, quite crazy. <laughs> OK, what's up next? Ah, so here, it's a project that we call the Sky Combo. Here, we're actually jumping at an altitude of 10,000 meters. This is pretty much the cruising altitude of an airliner. <laughs> And for that project, we wanted to realize a combo jump. Like the first part was a free fly where we did some choreography that we used to do in competition, but on an extreme environment. Yeah. Like it was minus 55 degrees outside, no oxygen, no margin for error. And the second part, we would open some small parachute and then fly down the south ridge of the Mont Blanc to finally land in Italy. And this was uh, an incredible project. Very tiring, but incredible. And this is one of my get a favorite. Ticket? You couldn't get a ticket on the plane? No, no. Is there, is there a reason why you're not just on the inside of this thing? You, you do realize that there's people on the inside. Yes. And actually, it was uh, quite funny because when we were flying a few meters away from the wingtip, we could see some of the guests waving at us at the window. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you take an airliner, just watch on the side. I could be there while flying. <laughs> that was the people waiting at us. Woo! <laughs> so this. This wing, uh, this wing it's, um, it was invented by a Swiss called Yves Rossi. And the wing is made out of carbon fiber and has four micro turbines that allowed us to fly through the air like birds, or more like jet birds. So, so this conference is about driving a revolution in marketing, but clearly you doing this is more than courage. It's not about jumping off a building or you know, flying your plane, even though it's cool. Um, so, so when people come up to you and they just go, oh, Vince, y'all are like courageous or you're crazy, what, what do you say to them? Well, I said that there is three keys to our success or uh, to who we are right now. And the first one is the teamwork. Because without a team, we or you cannot do anything. And some of those projects we made seemed impossible at first. But when we work together, we always find a way to make them work. And the key number two would be the risk management. Because with Fred, my teammate, we accept to take some risk, to reach the impossible, and to realize our dream. But we also fear those risks. But fear, it's a good thing. It actually keeps us alive. <laughs> so our goal is, it's true, so our goal is always to reduce and manage them as much as possible. And to give you an example, when we prepare for a project, we always train for every possible scenario. So if they happen D-Day, we are ready. And the final one is my favorite. It's to unleash your dreams. And this takes me back to when I was younger at school. My teacher would always tell me to stop dreaming in class. Well, good I didn't listen to them. <laughs> because it's actually our dream who leads our life. So the three keys I cover on here are definitely applicable to most people in these rooms and especially to marketers who need to work with their team, who need to manage risk for themselves and their customers, and who definitely need to have dreams to go to the next level. So, latest dream, latest project? Are you out of ideas? 
Oof, this one was uh, definitely the most uh, intense of our career. Okay. But let me give you a bit of background. Our latest project, we got inspired by a French skydiver named Patrick de Gaillardon. And he was the inventor of the modern wingsuit. So for those who don't know, the wingsuit is different than the jet wing. The wingsuit is this. It's this squirrel suit that we put on, that inflates, and it creates a profile that allowed us to fly down the mountain. And in 1997, Patrick, he was the, the only one flying wingsuit. And he already had jumped from an airplane and re-landed on the same airplane. And that's the picture you can see here. And that's something that we saw back then. And with Fred, we always told ourselves that we wanted to do it, but together, as we always fly together. So 20 years after, we wanted to celebrate his memory. Wow. But definitely, you know, it's like uh, it was some little twist that we, uh, that we had to uh, this project. Are we going to get to see it? Yes, uh, we are going to see Let's it. Let's see it. So basically, what we wanted to do is that instead of jumping from an airplane and re-landing on the same airplane, we wanted to jump from a mountain <laughs> and then land in the airplane after. So this is the stuff y'all talk about at lunch. Yeah, so, so, no, actually, so, no. so when we're all talking about conversion rates, y'all are like, hey, let's climb a mountain and jump off of it. Yeah, actually, it's, it's worse than that. It's like we were in my apartment uh, with Fred in Dubai last year. Uh, just to clarify, uh, I keep on talking about Fred, but we are not married. We are just, <laughs> we are just teammates and roommates uh, time to time. And that day, I woke up with a dream. So I went into my living room where Fred was, and I told him, bro, I just had that dream where we were flying back into the plane, but jumping from the mountain. <laughs> and you should have seen, it was in the morning, you should have seen his face. Because actually, like, this is very different than skydiving. Like, base jumping is very different. Like, unlike skydiving parachute, base jumping shoot don't have any safety device. So if we would get knocked out flying back into the plane, we would not be able to open any parachute. And another huge challenge was to figure, figure out how to synchronize us jumping from the mountain with zero speed and a plane flying at 100 miles per hour. But we started to look at it and doing a teamwork, as always. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. So ba basically, the first that we had to do it was to start training to be ready for that project. But the first training, they didn't really work as planned. So you had to climb up this thing? I mean, uh, we didn't walk. <laughs> we used helicopter, but uh, we had to walk a little bit for that part. But the first training where we were uh, jumping from the plane and uh, re-entering, they didn't really work as planned at that time. So it didn't work? No, it didn't work. But, but you're still here? Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> it was a few crashes. I think you guys have a few Yes, give, let's see it. Uh, <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Oof. So before going to the mountain, basically we, we were not going to go straight to the mountain and then try this thing and then maybe knocked out and then we, we die, you know, it's uh, not the goal. I love life. <laughs> so maybe the lesson here is it doesn't always work out, but did you stop or keep going? We did keep going. We okay. did keep going. But that day, you know, and it's the funny thing is that I was sure that on the first try I could go inside the plane. But actually, like, uh, that day I was not focused and I had so much stuff in my mind that this happened. But it's the same for you. If you are going to a big meeting and you are not focused, it doesn't work. So that day, us, we took a team decision to stop so I could uh, like repair my ribs and, uh, and take a little break, you know? So we took one so month so, so what you're saying is after you slammed into the plane and fell, then you decided to take a break. For yeah, the day. but the funny thing is that I would have not stopped <laughs> because my teammate, you know, he was there. Because when you're so deep in a project, you know, it's, so, it's hard, you know, to disconnect a little bit. So the team on the side, you know, that's why it's always good to listen to every member of the team. Yeah. They said, okay, let's stop now, otherwise someone's going to get hurt. And then when they said that, I was, I was happy because I would have kept on going. <laughs> but then it's like someone just like put you back into reality and then we realized. So we took one month of break to repair my ribs and then we were ready again. And okay. this time we didn't miss. Okay, let's see it. Woo!
It's good, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's padded, huh? it's, it's like it doesn't, but there is like foam inside, it's like a cushion. It's like you are going into your bed. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everyone give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> So I, I want th this is a this is a private conversation that you and I had, but I hope you, you don't mind me sharing it with everyone. What I found interesting was is is that we just saw both of you making it into the plane, but y'all shared with me when we were together last time that the fir the first time one of you made it into the plane, the other one didn't, and you did what? Jumped out of the plane to go back with the person. Yes, yeah, because at the end, you know, the, those projects we are doing them together with Fred and. Uh, if uh, one of us, you know, doesn't make the project, then the project is not done, you know? It's yes. not uh, because the, you know, people, they're gonna push you, us, it's straight in our mind. It's either we are doing it together or nothing. So here, you know, like, there was the practice, jumping from the plane, then re-entering, because we would not go and jump from the mountain without having perfect, like, re-entry. So we did around four months of training for that project. Four months. Yeah, jumping from the plane and then, like, re-entering around 100 flights with the same pilot before going and attempt from the mountain. But I tell you, like the day that we were ready to go to the mountain, we were getting close to our dream, but also to our fear. Look. Like first we needed to be dropped by an helicopter not too far from the summit, and we had to walk on a narrow ridge to reach our exit point at 4,000 meters. Then we had to do a rappel down, as you see on the north face, to arrive on an icy little rock that is about <laughs> the size of this, with just the room for the two of us. It was literally like the size of the two tables. And then at this point, the concentration was at the maximum, you know, as our motivation. Fred was next to me, fully focused. We didn't need to talk anymore. An eye contact was enough. And then me, just before jumping, I scream loud, and Fred is laughing. <laughs> like, we don't need the same to express our stress. And then, we see the plane coming, we hear the pilot giving us 30 seconds to go, the heart are beating, 20 seconds. We close the visor of our helmet, the plane is passing, we jump, we do a good start, we chase the plane, and then the pilot gives us, go for entry, go for entry. And at this point, I'm the first to go. And we are alone. I have my point of reference, I take a deep breath, I make my way up, and then I miss the door of the plane. <laughs> So then I'm tumbling down and I start to recover and I see Fred, you know, getting ready. So he goes up, he does the transition and he misses the door too. <laughs> and I, actually we didn't put enough energy, both of us. So we land to the valley and then we had to do it again. <laughs> we were so frustrated, but we knew that we wanted to go back up as soon as possible. Like, has it ever happened to you to do something again and again because you want to reach your goal more than anything? So we refocused, and two hours later, we were back on the summit to do our second try of jumping from a mountain and landing on an airplane. We'll see it. It's good, huh? It's, it's a big door. <laughs> Okay, vous pouvez voler sur moi. 